Welcome back to the Angus Report. I'm joined today by two familiar faces here on the studio set, Dr. Dan Mosher of Angus Genetics Incorporated and Dr. Kent Anderson of Zoetis. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Crystal. So today we're talking about calibration. Um, Dan, can you start by just, uh, for viewers who may not be as familiar with calibration, just describing what that is? Sure, Crystal. So the process of uh, calculating genomic and genomically enhanced EPDs uh, depends on us uh, determining the relationships between the DNA markers and the traits. And so uh, every 18 months or so, we've gone back and re-estimated those marker effects uh, so that we have the most current and most accurate information uh, to know which markers are predicting uh, higher or lower levels of the various traits in the genomically enhanced EPDs. The last uh, calibration was released in September 2014, and so now uh, about 18 months later in, here in April, we're uh, releasing uh, the newest calibration. And Kent, what, uh, what can producers expect, or what has really changed from calibration four to five? Well, I think one of the key takeaways, Crystal, is that the value of testing and genomic enhanced EPDs from Dan's weekly genetic evaluation just continues to grow. Now there's a dozen traits that um, the marker technology describes over 40% of the variation for. So when we have upwards to 100,000 or so animals in the training and the mm -hmm. calibration, we can just continue to do a better and better job of enhancing the accuracy of the EPDs. When it first started, there were fewer animals in the calibration, correct? Versus yes. today? Yes, and I think another takeaway is that really the, the continuity or the consistency of the genomic impact on the EPDs is very, very high, especially for the growth in the carcass traits. And, and then, then is that because of more animals being included in the research then? Exactly. And uh, beyond those then, uh, thanks to breeders again, they've continued to report all the maternal traits. And um, version five, um, I thought, did an excellent job at describing more variation in heifer pregnancy and mature cow size. Mm -hmm. And we continue to see improvements in explained variation for dry matter intake. So both the reproductive and the feed efficiency complex of traits uh, continue to benefit from the technology. And so, Dan, how are our producers using this um, even more improved uh, genomic data in their selection decisions? Well, you know, Crystal, for some of the traits like dry matter intake, uh, it is difficult to get the phenotypes. We are getting more feed intake data submitted all the time. But, but nonetheless, most Angus cattle don't have that trait measured. Nonetheless, with the genomic test, we are able to improve that trait uh, through genomic selection. And as a result, the breed is making progress for reduced feed intake while maintaining performance. So having a genomic prediction of that hard-to-measure trait is really beneficial to the breed. Uh, for traits like heifer pregnancy, you know, that uh, we're getting a lot more of those records now turned in, and so that's why we've seen the increased uh, power of the genomic prediction for heifer pregnancy. And again, that's a trait that's very important to commercial cattle producers. And so having a more accurate heifer pregnancy EPD based on genomics as well as the data that we've received will ultimately help producers pick the right bulls for their operation. Well, that's all the time we have today. Thank you both for joining us. If you would like to learn more about Calibration 5 or the Genomic Enhanced EPDs, along with genomic prediction tools, visit angus.org or zoetis.com. We'll be back after this. <laughs>